Today we're going to be talking about GT Pal. Now for the fun part, let's do a practice question. When I got GT Pal questions on exams, I would literally write GT Pal on a piece of paper, almost like a tally system. I would also write a small note next to each letter as a quick reminder as to what it means. So for G, I would write P for pregnant, T, I would write greater than 37, P, 20 to 37, A, less than 20, and for L, I would write alive to remember that this is the number of living children. Now we're ready to do our practice problem. You are admitting a client to the mother-baby unit. Two hours ago, she delivered a boy on her due date. She gives her obstetric history as follows. She has a three-year-old daughter who was delivered a week past her due date, and last year she had a miscarriage at eight weeks gestation. How would you note this history using the GTPAL system? So let's break apart this sentence by sentence. You are admitting a client to the mother-baby unit. Two hours ago, she delivered a boy on her due date. So, she was pregnant with this baby, G1. She delivered on her due date, which is term, T1. And now she has a living child, L1. I'm then gonna cross that statement out to tell myself it's already in the tally system. Now for the next sentence. She has a three-year-old daughter who was delivered a week past her due date. We know she was pregnant again, another tally on G. The baby was past due date, which is still term, another tally on T, and she has another living child, another tally on L. I'm now going to cross that statement out to tell myself it's already in the tally system. Last year she had a miscarriage at eight weeks gestation. She was pregnant again, so another tally next to G, and she miscarried at eight weeks, which is considered A, so we would put a tally next to A. But note here, we don't count this towards L because remember, L means alive. And this baby is not alive, it was a miscarriage. Making our final answer G3, T2, P0, A1, and L2. Now for practice question number two. I would go ahead and pause and try this one on your own. A prenatal client's obstetric history indicates that she has been pregnant three times previously and that all her children from previous pregnancies are living. One was born at 39 weeks gestation, twins were born at 34 weeks gestation, and another child was born at 38 weeks gestation. She is currently 38 weeks pregnant. What is her gravidity and parity using the GTPAL system? So let's look at this first sentence. A prenatal client obstetric history indicates that she has been pregnant three times previously, and that all her children from previous pregnancies are living. But hold on everyone, we need to be super careful before we just start tallying away. We need to gather more information. The question is going to break apart each pregnancy, so let's read on before we tally anything. Let's look at her first pregnancy. One was born at 39 weeks gestation, so we know she was pregnant once. That gets a tally under G. 39 weeks is considered term, so we get a tally under T. And we know she has one living child, so a tally under L. Now let's look at her second pregnancy. Twins were born at 34 weeks gestation. Well, we know she was pregnant again, which gets another tally next to G. And 34 weeks is considered preterm, so we put a tally next to P. Remember that twins count individually towards L, so we would put two tallies next to L for two living children. Now let's look at her third pregnancy. Another child was born at 38 weeks gestation. Well, she was pregnant again, another tally next to G. 38 weeks is considered term, so another tally next to T. And she has another living child, a tally next to L. The next statement says she is currently 38 weeks pregnant. So we count this one towards her gravidity, another tally next to G. But don't let this question trick you. We don't count this towards term or living children because she hasn't delivered the baby yet. Making our final answer G4, T2, P0, 
P1A0L4. Let's do one more practice question. Your patient is 39 weeks gestation and is in labor. This is her third pregnancy. She had an early miscarriage the first time and had 36 weeks stillborn daughter about two years ago. What is her GT PAL? So let's look at her most recent pregnancy, AKA her third pregnancy. She's currently pregnant, which gets a tally next to the G, but she has not delivered this baby yet. So don't let it trick you. It says she's in labor. So we don't mark it as term or living yet. The next statement says this is her third pregnancy. Like I said above, don't rush into tallying this, assuming that these are term and living. The question is going to detail the other two pregnancies further. So let's look at the next statement. She has had an early miscarriage the first time. So we know she was pregnant again, which gets a tally under G. And she had a miscarriage at four weeks, which we know is considered A. So we have a tally under A. We don't count it as L because she miscarried. Remember, L means alive. Second pregnancy says she had a 36 week stillborn daughter two years ago. Well, we know she was pregnant again, so another tally next to the G. She had a stillborn at 36 weeks, so we get another tally under P, but we don't count it as L because it was a stillborn. Do you see why it's important to walk through it? If we would have read she is in her third pregnancy and assume she has two living children, we would have gotten this question incorrect. So be sure to walk through each pregnancy before assuming or tallying anything. Making our final answer G3, T0, P1, A1, L0. That's it for GT Pal. If you like this video and found it helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like the video. Thanks.